everyone. Welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow Season 11. You're with me, Sunanda Jai Seelan. All of this season, we're going to be talking about the big ideas for a new India. What are the solutions? What are the opportunities? What are the challenges as India marches towards a new growth trajectory? All of that I'm talking about today on this healthcare special with none other than Dr. Naresh Srihan, who needs no introduction. Listen. In 2023, India's healthcare sector is valued at over $200 billion and is expected to reach $372 billion by 2026. According to the World Health Organization, India has a doctor to patient ratio of 1 is to 1,400 with over 1 million registered doctors and 8,000 hospitals. In addition, the Indian government has launched several initiatives to improve healthcare access, such as the National Health Policy 2017 and Ayushman Bharat, which provide free medical services to over 100 million families. Joining us today is the Chairman and Managing Director of Medanta the Medicity, Dr. Naresh Trehan, speaking on the tremendous potential of India's healthcare sector and the need for a strong focus on accessible and affordable healthcare for all. So good having you with us here, Dr. Trehan, on the 11th edition of the Leaders of Tomorrow. We're doing a deep dive into different sectors and uh, who better from the healthcare space than you and you're of course making your debut here with us on the Leaders of Tomorrow and okay. we're so glad to have been able to catch you for a quick conversation on the big ideas for new India when it comes to healthcare. Uh, before we come and really talk about the four or five areas that you feel are really going to be crucial and essential in this Amrit Kal, as the government has called it, uh, my first question to you is, you are a very successful doctor who is also a very successful entrepreneur and you've made that bridge, if I can call it, quite seamlessly. Two or three lessons from your entrepreneurial journey that you would like to call out for our viewers. So I still feel I'm a doctor. I don't feel like I'm an <coughs> entrepreneur at all. But it so happens that in the journey, which started with my going to New York University in, uh, in New York, where I trained, then they asked me to join the faculty, I practiced there, and a lot of Indians started coming to New York for their bypass surgery because we were the first generation of bypass surgeons. And it was very clear at that time that everyone who could come from India to New York to get their surgery done, there were hundreds of thousands who could not afford to, that $50,000 that it would cost them. So the whole idea was in the back of my mind, even before I went to the US, was that we must take India to the next step. And that was my, I, as I specialized in cardiac, and there was no real organized cardiac system in India at that time. We felt that I should come back and we built Escort's Heart Institute and I came back at that time and we created the largest freestanding heart institute in the world, by the way. But it was also became very clear while you are successful in doing what you did is the point that there was deficiencies on the side that other specialties were non-existent at that level. So if you know, a heart patient required the highest end of neurosciences or anything, they were not available at our institute. So looking around was the fact that we must create that kind of institution, which is equivalent to that of Mayo, Cleveland Clinic, Harvard, where all the experts, world experts are on the same platform. So that the patient gets the benefit of all collective knowledge of every specialty that they may need on one platform so that they, the outcomes would definitely be that much better. So that's the idea with which Medanta was created. Okay. That's why the size of Medanta is 1400 beds. Then also what we did to follow mm -hmm. to take it to other places. But once the concept had actually been proved that it works and people actually embraced it in the sense patients and the public supported us in this because they also understood that look, the quality of care that can be given by institutions of this variety is much higher than that would happen in smaller places where, where all the specialists on the same 
क्वालिफिकेशन वर्ल्ड बेंच मार्क कुड नॉट बी देर सो दैट्स द एडवांटेज ऑफ मैदान था सो वंस वी हैड वी हैड बिकम वेरी कम्फर्टेबल विद आर प्रोटोकॉल्स एंड एंड रोबस्ट सिस्टम दैट वी हैड डिवेलप्ड हेयर वी सैड लेट एस टेक इट टू अदर प्लेस इन इंडिया विच आर अंडर सर्व सो हैंस लखनऊ वॉज द फर्स्ट यू नो ट्वेंटी करोर पीपल विद दैट काइंड ऑफ हेल्थ केयर डिड नॉट एग्जिस्ट फॉर दोज ट्वेंटी करोर पीपल सो वी एस्टेब्लिश अ थाउजेंड बेड इन इन लखनऊ सिमिलरली बिहार हैज थर्टीन करोर पीपल and we it, it didn't this kind of standard didn't exist so we created one for bihar and also on the side because jharkhand didn't have we put one in ranchi and madhya pradesh also we put one in in indore so this was the journey which happened you may call it entrepreneurial but it was actually by jo- just by thinking about how to provide services to the people that we now have close to 3000 beds and uh, and we are very happy with what we were able to accomplish mm-hmm. and uh, the pride is that it shows you that indian doctors can match anybody and even exceed anybody in their skills and knowledge from around the world okay. so around so this is my belief sure. and we have proven it in yeah. this okay and i will talk about uh, manpower and the quality of manpower uh, let's discuss the couple of ideas that you feel are going to be really crucial for this new india the government been talking about amritkal we've heard a few announcements in the budget as well dr trian the first thing i want to talk about really is preventive health care and there's more understanding now perhaps of early detection of preventive health care but as an idea for new india and as a front runner in the space really what would you like to tell our viewers so if you look at the health care stack yeah it starts basically from wellness mm-hmm. so and as we go further up into the stack of one people who may have some develop some disease how early did you detect it what is the best treatment available how regular how easily is it accessible these are the various factors which you need to take in mind now if you look at the structure of ayushman bharat mm-hmm. scheme it actually deals with that it's a it's a very well uh, developed stacks for for healthcare delivery starting from the wellness center in the village so there are 150 centers i think a lot of them have been built already so that as soon as you one want to know about your health or what what the local healthy lifestyle should be depending on that location that can be di- disseminated through this wellness center also people have the confidence that if they have some some say just a cough just a, a fever just gastrointestinal problems or a new lump appears somewhere at least they can go show it to the doctor there and or, and by its connectivity by telemedicine mm. you can actually get the best of uh, uh, consultation on a video then of course if something needs to be de- detected it can go up to the district hospital or or to the specialist center and all that so along the chain you have to look at the missing links the missing links are all there for several things that i can point out just sure. like that sure. so you're saying okay if there are going to be and today covid also has helped to propel it at a much faster speed to say take the pa- the medicine to the patient rather than the patient having to come straight to to the hospital mm-hmm. essentially so wherever you can do so first consults if a patient needs to is away from you say 3 400 kilometers there are 70% of them can have their first consultation on video conference right sure so that means we are saving the patient the trouble of coming here we are saving him the money and he already knows what may be required the test may be required or even any procedure may be required so when they come they are coming prepared so it's not like i see somebody here i told them now i'll look at your angiogram you need a bypass then you, they'll go home they'll prepare themselves and come back so you you actually compress time mm-hmm. and you save a lot of money for the patient and the and the trouble for them mm-hmm. so that's one technologies that have attendant technologies that have been developed mm-hmm. and will continue to develop so if you look at if you're looking for opportunities to participate in this chain sure. there is opportunity in every gap mm-hmm. new things are happening i'll i'll tell you uh, about predictive health mm-hmm. 
So like you said, wellness and preventive was one part. Now we are saying, today the science is that we can do predictive health. Okay. So there are so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. what, we, what are we looking at? We are looking at your genetic history, your, your gen genomic makeup, your uh, biomolecular makeup, your environmental, your physical uh, surroundings will tell us very quickly who are the people who are more vulnerable to that particular disease than others would be. So all this has been, has been thought through, but opportunity will exist for anybody who wants to enter. So this is just in the, in the delivery space. Talk about the, the uh, attendant equipments and consumables that we use. I'm going to take a quick break on that note. Much more on the other side when we come back. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. You're with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow Season 11. Our icon tonight, none other than Dr. Naresh Trehan. So we're talking preventive health. We're talking predictive health. Uh, as another idea for this new India, uh, I would also love to talk about infrastructure and I'm talking about the physical infrastructure. We are here at your hospital in Gurugram, one of the largest by a private player like yourself in the country, in Asia if I'm not mistaken. And you have really invested in developing the physical infrastructure. There was some disappointment on the part of industry watchers uh, that there was not much announcement on the part of the finance minister as far as capital outlay for medical infrastructure and physical infrastructure by the healthcare and the pharma space. Uh, my question to you really is the opportunities and the idea when it comes to infrastructure uh, and you were talking about your 1000 bed space in uh, Lucknow, 650 beds that you have in Patna. What is preventing more players setting up physical infrastructure, not just in Delhi, Bombay, etc but also outside in the tier two, tier three markets. So on one hand, you can, it's easy to create infrastructure, but there are three essentials in, the, in, in, in creating a hospital, right? One is the physical structure, second is the technology, and the third is the human capital. All three, unless they jive with each other, you will not have be able to produce the kind of medicine that you would like to and what people deserve. Mm -hmm. Okay, So that is why <clears throat> it's important that we do all these things in tandem. Mm -hmm. So what is happening today? There was a very aggressive build out of physical facilities, but mainly concentrated in metros. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it, the quality of care that is in, in say NCR or Mumbai or you know, Hyderabad or Bangalore, it's, it's world class in a way, okay? Well, you can have plus minus a little bit here and there, but otherwise it's, a lot of people are giving high quality care. So the challenge comes in the human capital. There's a shortage of doctors, nurses, technicians, and care All over India, and not care just in caregivers. Yes, maps. because okay. of the fact that there's a mismatch. Okay. See, it's easy. It caught the fancy of lots of people. Let's create physical structure. Hospitals will make money. You know that kind yeah. of thing. But the attendant, uh, like medical education, trainings, and all that. So we are trying to do catch up right now. Hmm. So the government has announced many good policies about. Uh, uh, medical colleges, nursing, like they did in the budget also, yeah. that there will be 150 plus new nursing colleges, recognizing the fact that there's an acute shortage. Mm -hmm. Also skilling, mm -hmm. skilling of technicians, skilling of uh, caregivers, support staff, all that stuff. So, so all that stuff has is now been thought through that this is a gap which we must fill as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. But don't forget it takes 
10 years to train a doctor to become a specialist. Mm. So that's why the, we need to like move. Accelerate. Move. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Sure. Now, the other deficiency that took place in this whole development is that it's concentrated in metros. So tier two, tier three, three cities, and even the rural area got ignored. Mm. Now is the time with, with some of the, see, why is it so? Because of affordability. Today, to create a, an institution with this technology and physical structure and the human capital has become very expensive. So now, to make that kind of investment, you need also people who can pay for it. Mm -hmm. So, government has launched very uh, uh, this Ayushman as a very comprehensive scheme, <clears throat> and how, fifty crore people are supposedly covered or will be covered under it, right? There is a little bit of mismatch in the rates which the government is looking at and hopefully it will get, get uh, traction in the, in the next few months because unless the reimbursements are commensurate with the expenses okay. plus a, X amount of uh, uh, sort of uh, margin for the provider, it, it doesn't work. Then there's distress in the system. So today, even today, many, many hospitals are for sale or are in debt which they can't pay. So there's not such an easy job to do. Okay, now you, you come to, you step down into two, three and rural area. So there is a thought process in the government that there is a funding which may come from different funding agencies to provide 80% cost of creation of a, in, in tier three and rural areas, there are it, it is related to 160 aspirational districts which are under, underserved completely. So in that, 20% the provider will have to invest, 80% will come as a 20-year loan, and the government may even help with the interest rates. Okay. This thought process has been discussed and some exposure has been given to us also. Mm -hmm. So the point is that if that happens, mm -hmm. it takes away three parts. One is your, your pressure to pay back your loans in five, six, seven years is, is going to be a big relief if it is a 20 year loan. Why? Because it takes four, five years for the hospital to get established. Mm. It's not like a factory where you, where you start, start uh, manufacturing and you can sell it that same day. It doesn't happen like that. Second is the fact that the subvention of the interest rate, if the government actually does, uh, agrees to do it, will help to reduce the, the recurring cost. Third is the point that if Ayushman and other schemes, which are state schemes, are going to assure patients for the hospital and the rates become reasonable in the sense of cost plus, then there is no reason that India's uh, population will see healthcare which they have deserved for long periods of time. So this is a solution. Sure. And uh, in your, in your, I keep uh, coming back to your whole subject of where are the opportunities? Mm. Here are the opportunities. Everywhere there are opportunities. You just need to be committed. But one thing I would tell you, if you decide to enter the healthcare space, it, it should not be as a pure business venture. Mm. Because then you are taking away the humanness of medicine. It, is, it requires that humane element in it. Yes, you, you need to be, your costs need to be covered. We need to make uh, some margins on it from the investments, but it should not be cold blooded. Mm -hmm. But that's the, the warning I would give anybody who intends to enter the healthcare space. Sure. That was a deep dive into the healthcare space, talking about the big ideas for a new India as we're ending tonight's conversation. Here's a sneak peek at what we have lined up on part two. The next big idea, if I can call it that really, is the intersection of fields like Ayurveda and Allopathy. And that's something that, so could you yeah, tell I, us about I, that? I yeah. call it more fusion okay. because of the fact that there is, these are sciences, there's a lot of science in the Ayurvedic mm. uh, field, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of science in modern medicine. Modern medicine took the route that we are very effective, we did research, we, our whole methodology is what we call evidence-based. Alright, 
out of time on today's interview. I do hope that uh, you've taken away some ideas on what really are going to be those big opportunities in the healthcare space going forward here in India. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any feedback, we're all ears as always. Our contact details on your screens as we speak. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.